Put those hands together and bless them. Hallelujah. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? Quite frankly, it feels good to be here on this day, on a Friday night, in the house of the Lord, giving him praise. A lot of people started getting ready a couple hours to go somewhere else, but we got ready to come to the house of worship. And I promise you, this is going to pay off. My basketball coach used to tell me, he said, every time you work when somebody else isn't working, you're getting closer to the goal they want. So if we were in basketball practice right now, we'd be getting better. Somebody else would want to be a champion, but we would be putting the work in right now. And right now, there is something you want from God. And you don't understand right now, you're putting in the work to receive it. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. So don't worry about how much traffic you had to drive in to get over here. Some of y'all left work and you were hungry and you didn't get a chance to stop. But I promise you, fist bump your neighbor and say it's going to pay off. Because you may not have gotten that sandwich, but when the bread of heaven comes in the room, he will feed you until you want no more. Open, open your Bibles uh, with me to the book of Exodus chapter number 10. Exodus chapter number 10. I pray uh, Pastor Torrance isn't here with us today. He's doing a wedding for me uh, somewhere else. Isn't it good to have help? You can be in more than one place at, at a time. Uh, if I had something else to go, I was going to send Raymond in one direction and Pastor Torrance in another and be here with you. I wasn't going to miss this for the world. I had to be with you today. Exodus chapter 10. You're welcome. Verse number 12, Exodus chapter 10, verse number 12. If you got it, say, I got it. I need you to listen to me tonight. We didn't come out here to play tonight. We didn't come here to, to warm up. We came to set the captive free. And all the hell you've been through all day today, we about to give a devil a piece of his own medicine. <laughs> We're about to fight back in the spirit. Somebody shout, fight back. Look at verse 12. The Bible says, and the Lord said unto, put your name right there. Because sometimes we read the Bible and, and we think, um, you know, it was, it, yeah, but just take Moses out. What's your name? Okay. Put, put, <laughs> is William Edward Johnson III? I like that. And the Lord said to William Edward Johnson III. What, what's your name, sir? And the Lord said to Jesse, you see, I want you to put yourself right there because if you make this personal, you won't look at it like an expired command. This command still has shelf life. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts that they may come up on the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hail left. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt and the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night and when it was morning the east wind brought the locusts and the locusts went up over the land of Egypt and rested on the coast of Egypt very grievous where they before they were there it was here's what the Bible says such the locusts came until it was darkness all over the land and they ate all of the fruit and all of the trees which the hail left behind and there remained not anything green in the trees or in the herbs of the field through the land of Egypt. Verse 16, then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste. And he said, I have sinned against the Lord, your God, and against you. Now, therefore, forgive me, I pray thee, my sins only this once and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from me this death only. 
And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. Here's where I want to get to verse 19. We are launching the Lighthouse West today. The Bible says in verse 19, and the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind and took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust, not one thing that was eating up my stuff. Not one thing that was depressing me, not one thing that was giving me anxiety, not one thing that was concerning me. The West took it out in all of the coast of Egypt. I want to very, very simply just name this sermon and talk about the West wind. Just, just if you ain't too scared, fist bump somebody or high five them if you over it, just tell them God's about to send a west wind you may be seated in the presence of the Lord I came to preach did you come to worship very succinctly very quickly I'll get into the text without a lengthy introduction God promised William Edward the third. God promised Jesse. I know the scripture says Moses, but that was just his child that was alive at the time. But God promised you. God promised Moses at the burning bush that he would use his hand, here it is, Dexter, to smite Egypt. All of my life, I have looked at that word smite, and because it is such a biblical a conundrum, it is so apropos, it is so poetic, it's, it's used so much that I, I looked over it, but, but when I began to study the word smite, it actually means that when God says he will smite or hit or strike Egypt, the word smite means that he actually will tailor make the hit in a way that it would hurt only Egypt. God says, I ain't swinging just to swing. I'm going to consider everything about Egypt, its strength and its weaknesses, and I'm going to make sure that the hit that happens will hurt Egypt where it hurts. I'm going to smite. Everybody say smite. I'm, I, I so designed the hit for Pharaoh that there is no way he's going to survive it. When I hit Pharaoh for messing with you, he would have wished he will regret the day that he ever swung on God's people. He says, and I got a problem with Egypt. Egypt's problem is the problem they have with my children. If Egypt didn't want a problem, they should have resolved their problem with my people. But because Egypt has a problem with my people, now Egypt has got a problem with me. And I love a God that won't let me have a fight without jumping in it with me. Anybody know that God will jump in the fight with you? He says, I, I've assessed everything about Egypt that I need to assess. I know exactly where to hit them, and I know exactly how I'm going to do it. And, and the psalmist said in Psalms 138, uh, around verse 7, 8, he says uh, that the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. In other words, watch this. God is actually saying that if it concerns you, I'm about to do something about it. If it's concerning you, you can count on my support. If there is something on your mind that, that's concerning you, I want you to know you don't have to fight that thing by yourself. 
I'm going to smite whatever is, is bothering you. Somebody say, God handled it for me. God, God is going to perfect that which concerns me. And when the Bible says that the Lord will perfect that which concerns me, it means anything that irritates me. Help me, Holy Ghost. Anything that agitates me. Anything that worries me, God says, I'm going to handle that thing. Anybody worried about anything? Come on, be honest. I don't, don't, I don't need the super Christian today. Anybody ever had to, uh, to stay up late at night wondering how tomorrow was going to work out? Have you ever wondered how I'm going to pay that bill I, 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 and go grocery shopping? I, I can do one or the other. How, how am I going to fill up that gas tank and pay t uh, daycare? I don't know. I can do one, but I don't know if I can do the other. God says, if it's worrying you, I'm about to work on it. If it's worrying you, somebody say, God, work on it for me. God, work on it. God says, if it is worrying you, if it is causing you anxiety, if it is causing you stress, if it is causing you an issue, I have the power to end it. I have the authority to end it. I got the connections to end it. I know the beginning from the end. I know how it started. It don't even know how it started. It think it started. It don't even know I sent it. Because I am the God over the wind, the waves. I'm the God over the storm. And, and I'll let the storm go until I get tired of it. Then I'll step out of the boat and say these words, peace. I dare three people to just say it right now. Peace, be still. God says, I have the power to end it. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm setting you up. I hope you're listening to me right now. He says, I've got the power to end it. I can stop it right now. I can do it right now. In fact, let me show you, Egypt. Let me show you, Israel, that I can do it. Pharaoh, you won't let my people go? I got something for you. Here come 10 plagues. I got, I got something for you. 10 plagues. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, now, God, you, you said that you had me. Yes. And how are you going to do it? Through ten plagues. So, so you're not going to do it today? All this power talk, you're not going to do it today? God, God, I'm, I'm worried about something. I'm about to send ten plagues. Whoa, God, I need this done by eight. God, God, you got power. God, I'm about, to, I'm about to perfect that which concerns you. I'm going to send 10 plagues. No, no, God, I need this done by Monday. God told me to tell you real deliverance requires patience. Mm, I'm going to preach today. Most of us get upset with God because the pain lasts longer than our pain tolerance. And, and if it is not done at the threshold by which we get tired, then we think that God is inapt and that he is ignorant and that he doesn't have the ability to answer our prayers. But sometimes the deliverance comes in the 10th plague. The very reason we're in this church is because a pastor and his wife waited. They stepped out on faith and we walked into uh, uh, the embassy suites ballroom and, and, and we had it all set up and we had our first service and worship was great. And I, and I installed them at the altar in my suit and, and we had all of the other pastors and we laid hands on them. And 14 days later, the locusts came. 14 days later, the, the, the pestilence and the pandemic rose up and everything was shut down. And month after month, other churches were going up, but we couldn't find anything on this side. Month after month, all of the other campuses were thriving, but we couldn't find anything on this side. And, and, and the pastor could have given up, but he understood that sometimes it takes time for God to bring things to and expect it in. And I grew up in a house where, where, where my mother, she cooked. And when she cooked, she started cooking on Saturday for Sunday. Yeah. I, I know now we go out to restaurants and like that. But when I was growing up, it wasn't no restaurants. The only, the only real nice restaurant I ever remember go, going to growing up was Red Lobster. Let me tell you, them biscuits. And I know, I know it wasn't about me because I've been allergic to seafood my whole life. So I know we wasn't going there for me. But they had some good chicken tenders. And we would go. We would go, 
But when mama would cook, she would start on Saturday. She had a crock pot. She would put black eyed peas in it. It took time. Listen, most of, we live in a microwave generation. We want to put deliverance on 30 seconds, turn the dial, push the button, and the door opens, and we got a meal. But some, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles, walk and not be weary, run and not faint. God said, listen to me, if you're writing, this is your first note. God told me to tell you, I don't change situations according to your pain tolerance. And the reason I don't change it according to your frustration is because if I change the situation according to your frustration, the only thing that will be changed is the situation and not you. Oh, don't you, you better hear me. God says, you think I'm working on the issue, I'm working on you. You think, I'm, you think I couldn't have just cause Pharaoh to die don't you know that if I call on my father he will send me legions of angels 72,000 to be exact at the mention of his name there is no problem that you have that I cannot solve if I can create a world in seven days I can solve your problems in seven seconds but you think I'm working on the problem I'm actually working on you come here because all of your life you've been reading this story as if God has been handling Pharaoh. What if I told you God was handling Moses? Oh, I'm about to preach in here today. You, what, what, what if I told you that we would have probably opened the church two years ago and wouldn't have been ready? We could have opened the church two years ago and God hadn't yet given us the stamp of approval. So what does God do? He'll stop it to start it. And now here we are 26 months later, bigger than we were at our apex then because God says, I was working on you. God says, I'm not building churches, I'm building people. Somebody shout, God built me. God says, the reason I don't change the situation according to your pain tolerance is because the only thing that would have changed is the situation. And when the situation changes and you stay the same, you change the new opportunity into the old opportunity. That's why you can move from a place and, and move to another city and still can't stand it because you showed up. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me in this place today. Yes, you left Baton Rouge and came to Houston for a better life and you got here and didn't like it but forgot you came. Slap your neighbor say, everywhere you go, there you are. It ain't the city, baby, it's you. It ain't the neighborhood you live in, it's you. It ain't your, it's you. Somebody shout, it's me, oh Lord, standing. God never, ever, 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 ever does anything without a plan. You might not think that that was profound. That's the best thing I said all day. You are not going through anything that God hasn't planned. Let me say it the way I want to say it. You ain't going through nothing that God ain't going to get glory out of. Everything that today dealt you was a part of God's plan. I want you to think about it. From the time you woke up to right now, everything that has happened today is a part of God's plan. And just to save you the trouble of trying to figure out why today went the way it went, God already gave me the answer. I promise you, I know why you had the kind of day you had. I know why you had the kind of week you had. I know why you're having the kind of month you're having. And I know why you are in the season you're in. I promise you I do. Anybody want to know? Are you ready for me to tell you why? The primary reason for God allowing you to go through what you're going through, are you ready? Yes. Is so that he can get the glory. Yes. I know you don't believe it. I know you don't believe it, but slap your neighbor and say he got Bible. Yes. Revelations 4 and 11 says that God has created all things for his pleasure. John chapter 9 verse 2, there was a blind man. 
And in the days of the scripture, they believed that whenever a man was born blind, it was because either he sinned or his parents sinned. And when they showed up and found out the man had been blind, the disciples looked at Jesus and said, Jesus, this man is blind since birth. Did he sin or did his parents sin? Jesus looks at the disciples and says, neither one. He's blind for my name's sake. He's blind that I might receive the glory. The problem is we think we're God's gift to the world and not recognizing that God is our gift in the world. God created us that he might be glorified. He created us that we might give him glory in all circumstances. And your life will continue to be a struggle until you learn to be content in whatever state you're in. God says, I'm looking for contentment. I'm looking for you to still smile on your bad days. I'm still looking for you to be nice even when life is going upside down. I'm looking for you to still have a joyful heart when hell is surrounding your life. And until you can praise me in whatever state you're in, I'm going to continue to change the state. In all things, give him thanks. Let me save you the trouble. I'm aiming at you so that I can get the glory. That's it. That's, you don't shout about that, right? God, what? You ain't got nobody else you can pick? No, I want it from you. Look at your name and say, you. Yep, you. The one that lost his job, still give him glory. Yeah, you. They got more outgoing income, give him glory. Yeah, you that overwhelmed, you look at your husband and you look at your children, you're trying to figure out which one of y'all I'm going to push out the window. Yeah, you, the one, the one who gets frustrated, the one who gets anxiety, the one who worries, the one who has to take pills to wake up and take pills to go to bed, the one who's worried about the job, the one who's worried about the purpose in life. I'm still looking to get glory out of you no matter what you're going through. Somebody shout, he's talking to me. This plague, Moses, don't let nobody fool you. It's about you too. You can pretend like it's all about your enemy, but I don't ever do nothing without a plan. So I'm going to deal with Pharaoh, Moses, but I'm about to get some glory out of you too. I'm, I'm going to get something out of you too. And I know it don't feel like you're, you're a part of the plan, Moses. And I know it doesn't feel good. But Jeremiah 29 and 11, he says, I know the plans I have for you. Come on, y'all. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, that you would be in good health. And, and watch this. This is what I love about this text. He says, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future or what one context says, an expected end. You better hear what I'm getting ready to say because I'm about to knock some of y'all off of your socks right now. Are you listening to me? Somebody say, plans to give you hope and a future. God says, I know the future, but all you know is your feelings. And I'm going to hold up the future until you get a handle on your feelings. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God, it's going to be rough up in here today. You ain't come out here for this, but this is what I got for you today. I came to fight the devil, and I came to use you to do it. Because if you can get free in your worship, if you can get free in your mind and recognize that no weapon that has ever been formed against you will prosper even when it feels like it is prospering, God says, I know the future. I'm going to hold the future until you get a handle on your feelings. Because if I give you a future while you're in your feelings, you won't even know you're in your future. Dang, that was dope, and I just thought of it. If I give you a future and you in your feelings, then you won't even know you're in your future because you'll be in your feelings. So I'll hold it up and make you survive off of the present. And if you take, so, if you take too long, you're going to see somebody else enjoy your tomorrow. Because time waits for no man. 
you, you, you got to work the works of the one who sent you while it is day because the night is coming. You don't have all day to get mature. You don't have the rest of your life to get the glory. From you don't have all. You got to get it now. Now is the time that they that worship him must worship him in spirit. And the truth, somebody shout today, 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 today. You got too much money on the line. You got millions of dollars waiting on the perspective. Y'all won't say, you got businesses waiting on you. Your husband's waiting on you. Your wife is waiting on you. You got to get out of your feelings so you can get in your future. Who am I talking to today? So the primary point of the text is not to punish Pharaoh, but to get the glory out of Moses. What have I told you? That the more glory God wants from you, the more evil your enemies will be. And when I want a lot of glory from you, I'll give you a tough case. I'll give you somebody that no matter how much you pray, they don't change. I'll give you, why? Because it ain't about them I'm aiming at. So you might as well be free with the praise because I'm going to get it. You know, some people make you earn that praise. You know, you be up here preaching and singing, and they just be up there. <laughs> I give him glory. He ain't, got, he ain't even got to ask me for it. I come in. I, anybody, I, I was glad when they said unto me, <laughs> let us go to the house of the Lord. Because I know if I give him the glory, he's going to he's gonna give me the deliverance. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you 14 seconds right now. Because some of y'all need something from God. Your money came by. You don't have the connections for it. You don't know how to think of a master plan. God says, I will give you beauty for ashes. But you got to put on the garment of praise. Somebody getting it. See, the problem is you waiting on a part of the sermon to shout just because he's good. You, you don't have to wait on me to say anything. You don't have to wait on the music just because he woke you up this morning. Just because he started you out on your way. If the devil had his way, you'd be six feet under right now. But God has taken the sting out of death and the victory from the grave. Somebody shout a west wind. I'm just waiting on glory. I'm just waiting on glory. I created you to give me glory. If you bought a car and it didn't work, you take it back. Don't make me get a recall on you. I created you for glory. I created you for praise. And I expect that no matter if it's snowing, no matter, you expect your car to rain no matter what the weather is. I expect you to worship no matter what the temperature is. Whether happy or sad, I'll praise you. Through the good times, or you know the song, and the bad, I'll praise you. Why? Because praise. Listen to this. God told Abraham, this is why you ought to shout. This is so oh God. I, he, said, he, said, he said, look, hey, I will bless them that bless you. And don't you worry about it because I got an addendum. I will also curse them that curse you. So that means that people should never be your issue. Because if they bless you, I'm going to bless them. If they curse you, I'm going to curse them. But you're going to have to wait because I might use 10 plagues and I might not do it when you want it done. Oh, but it's going to get done. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Tell your neighbor, he, he may not come when you want him to come, but he'll be there.
Watch this. Listen to this. Watch this. Watch this. He says, he said, Mo, Mo, you tripping? Bro, you know me, dog. You know me. You know, you know how I roll. You know my reputation, dog. You know how I handles mine. He said, Moses, I'm, listen to this. I'm going to smite Pharaoh, and he is going to let you go. Okay, I, the only way I can conceptualize this so you can understand it is when I was preparing this, I thought like football. Anybody like football? Yeah. And you know how sometimes the wide receiver will go and take a slant route, come up the middle of the field, but he don't know it's a safety coming. Have you ever seen a dude get so hard his soul leave his body? <laughs> Any football fans? Like, like sometimes they get hit and the ball stays here, but they go back. So, so what, what God is saying, listen, that when Pharaoh thinks he's winning, He's going to get comfortable in a, in a routine or a route. And I'm going to hit him so hard, he's going to fumble you. He had every intention of holding on and getting to the end zone with you. But I'm going to hit him so hard that he's going to have to drop you. I don't care how strong his grip is. God says, when I get tired of him, mess, not when you get tired, but when I get tired, of, I'm going to hit the devil so hard, he going to drop you while he intended to hold you. Do you hear what I'm telling you? He's going to fumble you and ain't nothing he can do about it. Drop you. Just, he said, I'm going to smite and he's going to have to let you go. I came to prophesy to you, it's about to let you go. I promise. If you believe, by faith, it is going. If you doubt me right now, don't write me talking about it didn't work because faith without works is dead. If you believe it right now, the word of the Lord is, it's about to drop you. It's about to let you go. Let the redeemed of the Lord who the sun sets free. Somebody shout, let me go, let me go, let me go, let me go. I need these hands for praising. I ain't got time for war. I need these lips for singing. I ain't got time to be cussing. I need these feet for dancing. I ain't got time to be fighting. Somebody release about 15 seconds of glory in this room. Let me go, let me go. Satan, let me go. Let my son go. Let my daughter go. Let my mind go. Let my money go. And Satan, let the west side go. Listen to this. I only got one more thing to tell you. So what's the first reason for going through hell? So that he might, come on class, do you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? Not for you to get even. Not for you to go post and act like you're talking to everybody when you're really talking to somebody. You know the Lord gave me a word, and I just want to encourage you. You talking to somebody. We ain't crazy. <laughs> Mike, first reason. That he can get, do you hear me? I, listen, please, I want to get this from Lord, help me to translate this. So he can get, do, do you understand that? That's the first reason. If you can't get past that, you're going to struggle. I give my life as a living, holy and acceptable. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. 
And then he says the craziest thing. After I give my life as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, then he turns around and gets an attitude, which is your reasonable service. In other words, that's the least you can do. The least you can do is struggle so that I can get the glory. I done died for you, shed my blood, got nailed to a cross and went in a tomb. I'm so big that I shrunk and went into a 14-year-old womb for you. And if I can shrink for you, why can't you shrink for me? Give him the glory. Now, don't make him work for it. Just be like, here. Just, just take it. He wants Do you hear me? The second reason is then the plan. Then Pharaoh will let you go. Because it is impossible to hold on to a praiser too long. Listen to me. How many of y'all grew up in the old church? I grew up in the old church. Now, now, in this new young church, y'all just be dancing. Y'all so cute. Y'all just... Uh, that ain't how they used to shout when I grew up. When I, when I grew up in church, because we ain't had these little fixed seats like this. this we had pews. And, 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 and I done seen some of them pews get detached from the... Ah! And they be screaming. And then and the ushers have to get a certain... Y'all ain't been in no church. It'd be, it'd be the ushers, and this is how to shout at the ushers. Just, just getting hit all in the head. Why? Because when somebody's shouting for real, can't nothing hold them. I'm going to give you 15 seconds to let the devil know you couldn't hold me if you wanted to. By the time I finish shouting, I'm going to shout until I get loose. Let the redeemed of the Lord shout until the shackles fall off of got five more seconds. You better put the devil on notice. I ain't the same person that you used to mess with. Praise is my weapon. Somebody shout yeah. Don't you get loose yet? Because even then, Pharaoh still didn't let him go. And here is where the problem starts. We figured that because we follow three instructions, that at the end of that, you ought to have the results you want because you did. You came to church, you tithe, you shouted, you cried, free. That would be changing the situation. Remember, I'm trying to change. Pharaoh like, nope. I ain't finna let this free labor go. They building my pyramids. What, what I'm gonna let them... You, you gotta understand that some people won't let you go because it benefits them for you to stay bound. If you get free, they got to figure out how to do it themselves. If you ever get free and you're no longer insecure, they got to figure out a way to make themselves happy. So they keep you enslaved psychologically because they know what you need to feel good about you. But see, when you grow, they can't use the old trick because you're no longer the same. 
So Israel, too bad, you're going to have to stay in here 400 years because if you, you don't even know you got 40 more years after this because you ain't quite right. Now let me tell you why. Because the Bible says that the Egyptians were stubborn. Y'all got time? Ain't no, where you going? Ain't got to work. But the Israelites were stiff-necked. Do you know why some battles last a long time? It's because the offender and the offended are both stubborn. And when the offender and the offended got the same issue, <laughs> Egypt, you stubborn. Israel, you stiff neck. 400 years. It took that long because they both had the same issue. By the way, it seems as if stiff neck is worse than stubborn because Egypt's problems were over before Israel's. Israel still going through their problems now. Is your stubbornness elongating the war? Is it lasting this long because you're so headstrong? That can't nothing break you. And here you are talking about God 400 years. Yes, of you. It don't take me 400 years to do nothing. I created this whole joint in seven days. Read your Bible. It was only supposed to take them 13 days to get out of the wilderness. It took them 40 years. Not because it was that many miles, but because of that mentality. Your mentality is adding miles. Sometimes, am I helping anybody? Sometimes the miracle is delayed because the offender and the offended got the same issue. Oh, my God. Have you ever wondered why the scripture says it rains on the just as well as the unjust? The reason why it rains on the just and the unjust is he's giving both people time to adjust. I'm, I'm, I'm really giving you the opportunity to not experience what you want, but to become, become what you want. I've made up in my mind that to the best of my ability, I'm going to be what I want. See, I, right now, I'm in a battle of my life right now because my mom will tell you, I grew up having a temper. Now I'm in the battle of my life because I'm trying to learn how not to fight. I'm giving my own testimony. You ain't got to say nothing. My mother tell you, mama tell, it used to be a time it wasn't, I would not walk away from a battle. If you wanted to fight. You a preacher, and? Do you know how many fights I've been in since, I, I've been preaching since 14. Do you know how many dudes I stole on preaching the gospel? No, I, you don't understand. You don't understand. Mama, my mama's right there. I was such a fighter that I got in a fight with my girlfriend in the fifth grade in class. Not a fist fight, but you know, I, I, you know, I didn't never hit or nothing, but <laughs> don't make me go. <laughs> so now I'm in a fight of my life because. If I start fighting, I'm going to jail. And I don't want y'all to have to have no meeting <laughs> to come get me out. And now I'm struggling because I need to learn how to go far enough without going too far, and then sometimes I hold back when I should take a couple steps. I'm in the fight of my life. And 
God says, Keon, you can't have the same problem as the person who's offending you. I got to be able to tell the difference between you and them before I get to working. And I'm giving you a chance to adjust. Somebody say, Lord, help me adjust. Who am I talking to? Lord, help me. Help me to adjust. Help me to adjust. You've heard about these 10 plagues, haven't you? The first one was, he turned the water into blood. Literally, the rivers were red. Blood. All the fish died. Secondly, he sends frogs. One theologian said they were the type of frogs that croaked 24-7. So this is all you heard in Egypt. That's a bad, is that a bad frog? That's a bad frog. Y'all ain't got no frog sound on there? Read the Bible. Read the Bible. It says that the frogs were in the ovens. That means you would walk in your house, open the front door, you would have frogs in your bed. The Bible says there were frogs in the bed chamber. You open the refrigerator, there go frogs. Open your cabinet to get some mouthwash, here come a frog. Frogs in your baby's bassinet. And then after that came lice. Some of y'all gonna start itching by the time I finish preaching this sermon. After the lice came the flies. Is that a good fly? I'm better at frogs. I mean flies than frogs. Thank you. Can you... I can't stand. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. I hate bugs so bad. Some people here remember this. We used to have a church picnic. We had a church picnic. And when our church, before our church got of some substantial size, we used to have a church picnic. We would have about seven to 800 people come to the church picnic. And at that time, we could have just afford, we just bought everybody's, all the food. We just let you come out there and eat. I got out there one day. Y'all know them love bugs? We got out there one year, and the love bugs were so thick. This is, they, I'm not exaggerating. They had every table, the ground, just covered. I walked out there and seen all them bugs. I tried to wave them off. I got out there. We had spent $35,000 on Chick-fil-A and hamburgers. I said, all right, everybody, guess what? Picnic is canceled. Take the food. I'm going home. And I got in the car, and I left. I can't do it. So now they got frogs in the refrigerator, lice in their hair, flies in their ears. Go ahead and scratch. Because now that the flies are there, the next thing that happens is all of the cattle die. So now the flies become maggots. <laughs> now it's maggots everywhere. You walk out the front door, there's a dead cow. She said, okay, I ain't finished. Now he causes the plague of the boils. Now they got boils on their body. Now the Israelites don't have boils, but they are being treated unfairly because when people are in their own pain, they mistreat you. So can you imagine how frustrated the Egyptian are now that their, their, their cattle's dead and, and they got lice and flies and now they got boils on their body, pus coming out of their skin, and then a storm comes and the hail falls and destroys everything. Then the locusts 
then the darkness, and then all of the children who were the firstborn began to die. And they still didn't let them go. And you think it's going to be over this weekend. And because you prayed twice. And you went to the altar, shamana, hamana. Oh, now all of a sudden. It's just because you want a church. You just going to get one? Just because you want it full, you think it's going to fill up? Just because you want a job, you think you're going to get one? Can I tell you something? In life, you never get what you want. You only get what you picture. Okay, if you get what you want, how many of y'all want a million dollars? Raise your hand if you want a million dollars. You got it? No, you don't. You know why? Because you don't get what you want. No, you got a lot of stuff you want that you don't have. But if you have the faith to picture it, you can have anything you believe, but you cannot have everything you want. Ten plagues, still don't let them go. But the one I wanted to discuss today, I don't have time for the other ten, I just want to do one, the locust. The Bible says that the locust came and rested on Egypt and ate everything. Ate all the fruit, all the pig feet, all the hog moths. <laughs> Ate everything. And here's what I see, Steve. It didn't say that the locusts came. I'm almost done, seriously. It said that they rested. You know God is really about to work when the thing that came to get you takes a rest. The locust sat down. That's we ain't going nowhere. We're going to eat everything. And that's what the enemy is trying to do with your life right now is he's allowing the locust to strip you of everything you depend on. Stripping you where you're starting to feel you by yourself. You alone, don't nobody get you, you all by yourself. And the enemy has used the locust thought process to make you feel like you have nothing left. Not knowing that the entire time the devil has always been a liar. He's a liar. And ain't no truth in him. That's what the Bible says. He is a liar. He is the king of liars. He is the father of lies. It ain't as bad as you think. The locusts are resting, eating everything that it took months to grow. And they're resting. And God says, Moses, Jesse, this is not Pharaoh's problem. This is your process. And if you think this is about God getting Moses straight, you're going to miss the movie. This is about creating something in you that you don't know you need yet because I'm about to get y'all out of here. And everything you learn in Egypt are the tools you're going to use in the wilderness. And if you skip class, you're going to flunk the future. Do you know how many people flunk in life because they skip class? Pain is a teacher. And if you skip class, you're going to repeat the same grade. You got to learn from this instead of wanting it to learn. Moses, this is about you. Do you hear me? Who am I talking to in this place? Yes, 
Pharaoh said, All right. Okay. Y'all get out of here. I'm tired of all this fly stuff, frog stuff, lice stuff, blood in the water stuff. Because see, what you don't know is why you think you're struggling. Your enemies are too. And you're going to mess up the future trying to get in God's way and help them suffer more so you can feel better about yourself. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me, let me shift it. Keep playing that. I'm, I want to minister to you right now. The Bible says that he sent a west wind. I told you he wanted the glory. If you study the tabernacle, you will find out that the tabernacle of Moses faced the east. But when you enter the tabernacle and walk up the steps toward the holies of holies, you are now facing west. One theologian said the holies of holies is facing toward the Shekinah. Ah, this, I know this is, sit up, sit up. I'm, I'm teaching you. I'm, I'm going to explain it. The holies of holies in the tabernacle. This is the portable tent where they worship when they didn't have a temple. When you would walk up the steps, you remember there was a curtain and behind the curtain was a place called the holies of holies and only the high priest could go behind it. In one instance, there was a scripture in the Bible where one man tried to touch the Ark of the Covenant and he fell dead because you cannot touch the glory without authorization. It says that the West was facing the Shekinah, the presence of God, the glory of God. The West represents the glory. And God told me to tell you we didn't come over here to have church. We came over here to give them glory. Somebody shout the glory is in this direction. Come on, somebody say, the glory is in this direction. Who has an iPhone right now? Anybody up? You got an iPhone? Open up, open up your app and find the compass. Pastor Raymond, well, open up the compass. Just somebody, us old people going to take you too long. Any young people that know how to do that? Okay. All right. I knew this coming in, but I want to make sure. So when we came in here to get this building and the Lord gave me this message, I was sitting right here on a stool. I opened up my phone, sitting right here. And I never opened it, but for some reason when I opened up my phone, the compass was open. And I started to do this, and I'll show you guys. This stage, if you're facing this stage, you're looking west right now. Is that true? This wall is the west wall of this church. Not the north, because if you, if you directionally challenge like me, everything in front of you is north. Right? Like that's north. No, it is not. That's north, that's south. That's, I think that's east, that's west. This is west which makes that east. Remember the locusts came in from an east wind. But it was driven out because of a west wind. And the Lord told me to tell you, every time you come into this church, I want you to face this direction and I want you to give them glory. And every time you're facing this direction, God says, I'm chasing out the locusts. I need everybody looking in this direction. Hallelujah. 
I need everybody speaking in this direction. I need everybody giving glory in this direction. Come on and put your child's name in your mouth. Put your circumstance in your mouth. Put God's name in your mouth and open up your mouth and give him glory. Come on, cast your cares on him because he cares for you. There's a west wind coming. God, you can have this situation. You can have this issue. You can have this anxiety. You can have this worry. You can have this depression. I'm not taking it back out of this room. I'm not taking it back to the car. I'm not taking it back to the house. I'm not taking it back in my mind. I'm going to release it today. Come on, release it. Come on, release it. I said, come on, release it. There's a west wind coming. I feel it in the atmosphere. I said, there's a west wind coming. I said, there's a west wind coming. I said, there's a west wind coming. Satan, get your hands off of this church. Get your hand off of this people. Get your hand off. You can't touch us. There's a west wind coming. Somebody shout, get ready for a west wind. Get ready for a west wind. There are business opportunities in this direction. There's glory in this direction. There's ministry in this direction. There is health in this direction. Come on and give him glory. I said, come on and give him glory. Hallelujah. I said, come on and give him glory. I'm waiting on you. The service is over. Come on and give him glory. The Shekinah glory is in the room. Come on and give him glory. 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 I'm going to say it until you do it. I said, come on and give him glory. You too cute. I said, come on and give him glory. Release the sound of praise. Release the sound of worship. Hallelujah. The locust is leaving. The locust is leaving. Satan, get your hands off of my money. Get your hand off of my family. Get your hand off of my mind. Get your hand off of my confidence. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. There's a west wind. I, I don't know who can feel it. I feel it. There's a west wind coming. There's a west wind coming. It's about to carry all of your issues away. There's a west wind coming. 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 There it is. There's a west wind coming. Come on, Holy Ghost, there's a west wind coming. I said there's a west wind coming. Give your neighbor a high five and shout, neighbor. I'm about to prophesy over your life. Old things have passed away. God told me to tell you to get ready for new things, new experiences, new opportunities, new ideas, new thoughts. There's a west wind coming. Some of y'all came in here heavy laden, but God told me to tell you he's about to release you. Somebody slap your neighbor and say, when I leave out of here, I'm leaving with the victory. When I leave out of here, I'm leaving under the anointing. Everywhere my foot shall tread, God's going to give it to me. Somebody shout, it's mine. Oh, you ain't got no faith. Healing, uh, it's mine. Joy. It's mine. mine. Locust, you gotta go. Depression, you gotta go. Anxiety, you gotta go. Frustration, you gotta leave. This is my season. This is the year of Jubilee. 
Have I got somebody in here? Over the next 30 seconds, open up your mouth and shout yeah! Yeah! Shout yeah! Yeah! want to get happy. Hey, yeah. There's a west wind. There's a west wind. There's a west wind coming. Somebody's about to get set free. I said somebody's about to get set free. There's a west wind coming. I feel deliverance in the room. Hallelujah. There's a west wind. There's a west wind coming. Something's about to happen. There's a west wind coming. Somebody shout, I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. It's in the atmosphere. There's a west wind coming. I said, there's a west wind coming. When you get home tonight, the wind will have already been at your house. There's a spirit of heaviness that's going to be lifted off of your house when you get home. I declare it. There's a west wind coming. There's a west wind coming. That heaviness on your marriage is about to disappear. There's a west wind. There's a west wind coming. Some of y'all been depressed and having anxiety all month. There's a west wind coming. 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 I speak deliverance. 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 Do me one more favor. Look your neighbor in the eye. Tell him one more thing. There's a west wind coming. 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 I decree and declare it. There's a west wind coming. You ain't gonna be the same when you leave here. There's a west wind coming. Can I tell you one more thing? And I promise you I'm gonna leave you alone. Can I tell you one more thing? There's a west wind coming. 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 And guess what his name is? His name is the Holy Ghost. The Paraclete. Thou art with us. There's a west wind coming. There's a west wind coming. Can I tell you one more thing? I promise you, I swear this is the last one. You haven't heard this all day. Look at a new neighbor. Tell him I got a word for you. There's a west wind coming. There's a west wind coming. There's a west wind coming. There's a. There's a west wind coming. There's a. 
There's a west wind coming. 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 When it comes, everything that's been resting over your life, it's going to have to move. How many of you believe it? That's a west wind. It's going. It's just going. Take it all away. May not happen on the first play. Might not happen the second time you pray. May not happen the third time you go to church. But there is a west wind coming. Hallelujah. There's a west wind coming. What an amazing time we had in the service today, the word was phenomenal. Listen, if you haven't had an opportunity to join our church, the information is on the screen. We wanna connect with you. Or maybe you're saying, hey, I just wanna sow a seed into what they're doing right there at the Lighthouse Church. Well, listen, the information is also down on the screen. We want to help you connect to a greater mission. Listen, I wanna pray with you because the word today, I know has settled in someone's spirit it's changing your life. 
So come on, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just want to say thank you just for everything that was said today. God, we thank you, Lord, for all the ears and the hearts that received this word because we know that you're channeling them and transferring them and pushing them into a new dimension in you. God, we just want to ask, God, that you lift them up. Whatever the issue is in life, we pray, God, that you deal with it and work it out right now. God, we just want to say thank you. All these blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name, amen. Listen, we can't wait to connect with you. Remember, share this message. Share this on, on every platform you have. Someone needs to hear this word. We love you. Can't wait to see you again. Bye-bye. What's going on, family? If you're watching this video, you've already decided that you feel my vibe. You already have decided that you like something about the Lighthouse Church. And guess what? We are looking for people to minister to who look just like you, who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who believe he is the sustainer and creator of the world. And we use this social media internet platform to spread the gospel all across the world. And that includes coming directly into your house. Lighthouse 2.0 is simply a group of people who say, you know what? We either can't make it to the sanctuary or we don't live in the city, but we love the ministry that is coming out of that house. And guess what? We view you as one of our own. So I want you to tag, text, or tweet anybody you know that needs to hear a word from God. Share this thing so that way we can actually be in line with the Great Commission. Going ye therefore into all the world, teaching people about Jesus Christ. Lighthouse 2.0. That means that you are a part of our family and you are friends that we have never met, but soon hope we can. Oh, and by the way, can I tell you what I tell all of the people who stand in line? Give me 1% of your trust. I'll earn the other 99. Give me one year of your life and God will change it. God bless you, Lighthouse 2.0. I'll see you hopefully online or in person.